Choosing the right glue can be the difference between a good bookbinding experience and a frustrating failure. Hi, I'm Andrew Seltz for DIY Bookbinding, and in this video, we're going to look at the major glue options available and the pros and cons of each one so that you can pick the right glue for your next book project. Now, figuring out which glue to use for my Perfect Bound book projects turned out to be one of the most challenging aspects of the whole project. Gluing together the edges of a bunch of pieces of paper is trickier than you might guess. The glue must be strong, flexible, and easy to apply. It has to dry quickly, but not too quickly, and it has to stand up to the abuses that a typical paperback book is subjected to. Now, historical options have included flour paste and casein glue, hide glues, and rice starch glues, amongst others. And if you want a real hardcore DIY experience, you can make your own glue. But for most of us, a commercial glue is probably the most likely option for a perfect bound book. Now, I've done a lot of research and experimentation with different kinds of glue, and what I'm going to share with you now is what I've discovered. I hope that this helps you to pick the best glue for you. First up is PVA glue, which stands for polyvinyl acetate. This is just good old-fashioned white glue. It's the same stuff we all used in elementary school. Now, PVA is the most versatile and forgiving glue that I've ever used, and it can be found in pretty much any art supply or craft store, plus it's got the bonus of being inexpensive. PVA is easy to work with and it's really strong. It also is very flexible and you can brush it onto the spine of a book. PVA glues are typically acid-free and they're often used in libraries to repair books. The biggest drawback of a PVA glue, though, is the slow drying time. So you're going to want to keep your pages clamped together while it dries. And also it has a fairly high moisture content, so it saturates the paper and can cause some buckling and curling when you're working. You'll need to press your books and keep them that way while they dry, and that'll keep the paper from wrinkling as it sets. If it dried faster, though, PVA would be perfect. Next up is contact cement. Another common glue choice is contact cement. Now, Power Poxy is a brand that I came across a lot in my early research, and I've used it before, but it's getting pretty hard to find. It's basically a neoprene-based contact cement, and it's somewhat thicker than PVA glue, but you can still brush it onto the spine. You apply it to both the spine and the cover, and then you let the glue set up for a minute before you press the spine and the cover together for the final drying, which only takes a few minutes. The resulting bond is strong and flexible. My main complaint about contact cement is that it stinks. Two-part epoxy. I've successfully bound books using five-minute epoxy. Now, epoxies come in two parts, which are mixed together, and then they cure through a chemical reaction. The resulting bond is extremely strong, but it's not very flexible. Working with epoxy can also be a bit tedious because you have to mix just enough adhesive for one book at a time. You mix too much and the rest just hardens up into a useless rock. Now, if you occasionally make one or maybe two books, epoxy could work for you. But if you produce any more than that, the constant mixing is going to slow you down. You can also use slower curing formulas, but then you have all the same problems as you have with PVA. And epoxy does have an odor, but I don't find it nearly as unpleasant as contact cement. EVA, ethylene vinyl acetate, better known as hot glue. Now, I've experimented with hot glues, but I wasn't really happy with my early results. EVA is the primary glue used by professional binderies, and it's also the glue that's used in pretty much every short-run perfect binding machine that I have ever seen for sale. Hot glues, though, can be harder to work with because of their fast drying times. Now, early on, I spent a lot of time trying to get smooth, even glue coverage, often resorting to using an iron to remelt the uh, glue on the book spines and get it workable again. And that's because I used a low temperature gun. You need a heavy duty, high flow, high temperature glue gun and a putty knife or something similar to get a smooth spine. You also need a sturdy jig that will hold your book with the spine up while you're working. Now, I demonstrated this technique in another video. If you just click the link in the top corner, you can watch that tutorial. Now, I have seen some people that have created custom nozzles for their glue guns that deposit the glue in a wider pattern, but I don't have the tools to uh, copy that idea. But if you want to try something like that, the Surebonder Pro 2 100 gun has an interchangeable nozzle that includes a wide flat one. Now, it's not super wide, but it's better than the standard nozzle on most glue guns. I once even though saw a demonstration of a person who used an electric hot plate to melt a whole bunch of EVA glue into a pan, and then he just dipped his book spines into the glue. 
He was able to make a lot of uh, books really fast, but there was a considerable amount of setup involved to get that thing working. And of course, you ruin a perfectly good cooking pan. Now, professional bookbinding machines use a heated glue pot that travels across the spine to deposit the glue evenly. But there's also an electric bookbinding tool that uses special covers that uses preformed strips of hot melt glue inside the spine, and then you paste, place your pages in the cover and place the spine down into the device, and you just wait for the heating element to melt the glue into the pages. Now, the covers aren't much to look at, but the bindings are pretty strong. Hot glue is a worthy option, but you will need to invest in some good equipment, and you're going to need to take a little bit of time to practice your technique. Polyurethane Reactive Adhesive, Pure. My initial projects use Gorilla Glue to glue the pages together, which is a form of pure glue, which reacts with moisture when curing. This type of glue tends to soak into the paper a bit, and it gives a good, strong, but somewhat stiff spine. But it can also expand like a foam as it's drying, which results in a lumpy spine. So the thickness of the application is absolutely critical to getting good results. The Gorilla version is brown, and every cover that I've ever used it on became discolored as the glue soaked in, so I recommend using a transparent pure glue for books. You'll find it in the woodworking section at your local home center. Now the drying time for a pure glue is pretty much like a PVA glue, so you're going to need to keep your pages clamped together for a while as it sets up. Uh, be very careful though not to leave any excess glue on the surface of the paper, as it will expand as it dries and puff up, creating that lumpy spine that I mentioned. I tend to use a cotton swab to press the glue into the spine and then remove the excess material. Now you could use a pure glue to bind the pages and then come back with a contact cement to apply the covers. I'm not sure how well those two glues would bond together to each other over the long term, but my guess is it probably would be strong enough. The final option we'll look at is HM Pure or hot melt polyurethane reactive glue. This is a new option that I've recently discovered and it seems to be pretty popular among commercial binderies. For DIY projects, it's applied with a gun like an EVA glue, but it undergoes a chemical reaction when curing so you can't remelt it later. It's very strong and flexible and it dries quickly. This glue comes in various formulations that have up to 75 minutes of working time before the glue sets up, so you can find an option that has enough work time to let you go at a comfortable pace. The hot melt version of pure glue is less prone to foaming as it cures, but it's still a moisture cured adhesive. It is particularly good at binding clay coat papers and other specialty papers. This is not going to be an easy glue to find though. There are uh, versions of pure hot melt glue on the market that are pretty much focused on the construction industry. 3M makes a line of products called Scotch Weld, but the required application equipment is expensive. You can sometimes find it in your local home center, but you will probably have to special order this glue. Uh, these versions though are designed for high volume use, and so the glue tends to dry out once you open the cartridge and it comes in big cartridges. Franklin International makes a modestly priced kit that comes with an applicator gun that's very much like a you know, glue gun on steroids. I've not had an opportunity to use it yet for a book project, so I can't vouch for this glue, but it does look like a promising option. People who use the Franklin system report that the gun itself is a little bit delicate and that the shelf life of the glues is only a few days once they've been opened, even if you tightly cap them in between uses. So it's not a perfect solution, but it is a much more affordable option than the 3M products, and the glue comes in smaller cartridges. So here are my recommendations. If you're a first-time bookbinder, use a PVA glue. EVA glue, the hot glue, is a great option that if you have the right equipment, you have some patience, and you're willing to practice a bit to get a feel for the process. And if you're looking for something that's in between those two, try contact cement and just open a window. Now, if you know of a better glue option than the ones that I've mentioned, please leave a comment and share your experience. I'd love to try something new. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and subscribe to our channel. You might want to also consider becoming a Patreon sponsor and help to support future videos published to this channel. Also, visit the DIY Bookbinding website at www.diybookbinding.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Andrew Seltz.